morning, shipmates. Welcome, and thank you for joining us. This is our morning announcements. Good morning, friendship. Good morning, friendship. My name's Rachel. I'm Jamia, and I, we are here to give you your July 19th announcements. So as you guys know, COVID-19 is still rapidly spreading. So in order for us to help slow down this virus, we are still gonna to continue to have online service. Also, Pastor just wants to make sure that you guys are protecting yourselves and protecting others by still continuing to wear your mask Please. in public. Wear your mask. I know it's rough, but still try do wear those masks, okay? Please. Um, also, in preparation for us to have in-person service, we do have an online survey on our website at www.friendshipchurchtulsa.org. It's about a three minute survey. We three just minutes. want you guys to go on there and let us know um, just kind of your input on things to prepare for us to have in person service. Are you a new friend? I'm always. Are you a new friend? <laughs> well, join our intercessory prayer team every Wednesday at 6 30 a.m. and Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. Bible study will be immediately after prayer. Please join us at 425-436-6339 and the access code is 381706. Also every Sunday we do have Sunday school which is 8 30 a.m. and you can also use the same conference line that you do use for the intercession prayer. So the same phone number we just read off and the same access code. Yes. If you know any seniors that are in need of any necessities or anything else during this time, please, please, please contact us yes. um, at info at friendshipchurchtulsa.org. Yes. Also, we are Little Lambs, Children's Church, and Crossroad Ministries. Okay. I know, right? I cannot wait until we have in church again in person. Um, so we do have our Zoom for you guys um, for our Crossroads, Crossroads Ministry and Children's Church. Um, so the Zoom ID for that um, is 593-627-2473. Again, it's 593-627-2473. And the password for that is Friendship with the capital F. Um, also, um, the Zoom is from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. Okay, so... Can you believe Pastor Jay has been a pastor for one year already? No, it is so crazy. I know. So next Sunday at the 10 a.m. virtual online service, we are going to celebrate the first anniversary of our pastor in the first family. Woo! We're going to have a guest speaker, Pastor Reginald Sharp Jr. He's the senior pastor at Fellowship Church in uh, Chicago, Illinois. So join us every Sunday at 10 a.m. Um, Pastor has been preaching on building from brokenness, and this series has been so amazing to so me, and I'm sure it's been amazing to a lot of different other individuals. So last Sunday he preached on the beauty in brokenness, and I am so excited to find out what this Sunday today. <laughs> Keep going, I can't do it. Oh my god. I am so excited to see what this Sunday sermon is gonna be about. I know it's gonna be crazy. Okay, so are you guys prepared for our worship service today? Woo! We are. Because if you are, we have a way that we want to incorporate everybody in the virtual service. Right. So um we want you guys to check in with pictures, um, your families watching service, having brunch, um, watching the service, and use the hashtag virtual ship and hashtag get on board. I don't know about you guys, but I'm excited to worship with the Lord this morning. Me too. So if you guys could please like, share, have watch parties as we continue to grow friends into family through faith. Welcome aboard the virtual ship. Our worship service will begin shortly. We are. We on the last one and quit. Totally, totally win. Totally win. Dead. Just blank. Hi, my name is Lexi, and this series has been.
has blessed me by reminding me that my life is beautiful and victorious no matter how many letdowns I have. I have learned that in order for something beautiful to happen, you have to be broken. And this series has helped me by telling me to run to God instead of away from God. Because in order for me to fix all of my broken pieces, I need Him to become a beautiful masterpiece. My words of encouragement to others is that you're going to get your no's and you're going to get your letdowns. But that one yes and that one success story is going to be that one thing that just makes everything worth it. And in order for that to happen, you have to put your faith in God and believe. How has the series helped me become whole? Um, me being a prideful man, learning to admit and submit my brokenness to God. As Pastor said, I have learned to mask, normalize, and become desensitized to my brokenness. But he said there is strength in surrendering. I would just encourage you to truly let go and to truly let God have it. Friendship, family, and friends, it's been about four months since I've seen you guys. That's a long time. Honey. Yes, that's such a long time. Friendship, we miss you all so much. We miss seeing you guys, and so we want to see you. So during this worship time, we want you to take a picture while you're worshiping with your family or by yourselves, wherever you are, even if you have your bonnet on, even if you got your do-rag on, we want to see you. <laughs> yes, that's right, friendship. We want to see you. So take a picture, just like Pastor said, and tag us on social media. Hashtag the shift and post it. We can't wait to see you. Can't wait to see you guys. Come on, let's get on board for worship. Look. Good morning, friendship. We've come to lift up the name of Jesus. Anybody excited to lift his name on high this morning? Come on and lift up a sound of praise. Hallelujah. Lord, we love you. We honor you. We praise you. We exalt you. We magnify your holy and righteous name, O oh God. We pray that you be in the midst of this service, O oh God. Touch thine our people, O oh God, and have thine own way here and wherever they may be. We will give your name the glory and the honor. In Jesus' name, everybody shout amen and amen. Come on, put your hands like this.
Come on, hands lifted everywhere. Come on, lift up your voice. Sing Worship his name. Oh, right where you are this morning. You are oh, worship his name this morning. I guarantee if you just began to call at the name of Jesus and began to tell him what you need, I guarantee he'll come see about you. I'm looking for some folk who know how to call on the name of Jesus. Don't surround me with no folk that don't know how to call on the name of Jesus because uh, uh, when you realize that Jesus is all you have, come on, testify somebody. You know that he's all you need. Uh, come on, come on, talk to him. Come on, come on, call his name. Call his name. Jesus, Jesus. Come on, call his name. Come on, call his name right where you are. Come on, call his name. Call his name. It's something about that name. It's something about that name. It's something about the name of Jesus. When I call on the name of Jesus, my burdens get lighter. When I call on the name of Jesus, my days get better. When I call on the name of Jesus, sickness begins to flee. When I call on the name of Jesus, healing begins to come. Somebody said he's the wheel in the middle of the wheel. Somebody said he's the fire that keeps on burning. I don't know what he is to you, but let me tell you what he is to me. He's my way maker. He's my provider. He's my sustainer. He's my restorer. He's my all in all. He's my way out. He's my way over. I don't know what he is to you, but whatever he is to you, and whatever you need him to be, Call him. 
It's something about the name of Jesus. I don't know about you, but, but we've come here for no other reason this morning but to lift up the name of Jesus and to bless the name of Jesus. And I need some folk in here and out there in the virtu on the virtual ship who can testify that every time I call on the name of Jesus, he may not have come right when I needed him, or right when I wanted him, but he came right when I needed him. Is there anybody who knows him to show up on time? Devil dog dare you to call on that name of Jesus. Call his name. Oh, we've come today to lift up the name of Jesus. We've come here today to call on the name of Jesus. We've come here this morning to cry out to the name of Jesus. For there's no other help than we know. Yes, we call on that name, the name that's above every name. And I've come today praying this morning for those who are in need of whatever it is uh, they're in need of. I pray uh, that through this worship experience, uh, they will experience Jesus like never before. Uh, I need some folk who, uh, who know too much about him to doubt him. I pray today uh, that through this worship experience, uh, people will find him to be a way maker. Uh, people will find him to be a provider. It's some folk that lost their job through this pandemic, but you haven't gone without it's because Jesus uh, has always been providing and for that reason God we come to say thank you we've come this morning blessing the main the magnificent name of Jesus uh, because at that name every knee shall bow it's at that name that every tongue shall confess uh, and so for the rest of our lives uh, we'll determine to praise and worship that name it's in the name of Jesus God moved by your power have your way today. Holy Spirit is already in this place. God, people are watching this morning. They're dealing with, with so much this morning. And I pray, oh God, that the name of Jesus will help soothe their doubts and calm their fears. I pray that the name of Jesus will help dry all their tears. It's in that name that's above every name. It's in that name. Some pray to Buddha. Some pray to Muhammad. Some pray to Confucius, but I pray in the name of Jesus. It's in that name that we pray, and we thank you, and we love your name. In Jesus we pray. Amen. Come on this morning. If you love Jesus, you ought to just shout right where you are. I mean, you ought to lift up your hands. You ought to open up your mouth. You ought to just scream right where you are. If you love the name of Jesus of the I don't know about you, but I get excited every time I talk about that name. I can't speak for you. I can only speak for me. But every time I hear the name of Jesus, my soul gets happy. Every time I think of the name of Jesus, oh, 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 oh every time I think of his name, my, my, my heart gets excited because I look back through my life and all that I've been through and all that I've overcome. And I understand that I've only been able to overcome because of the name of Jesus. I need some folk this morning who can testify that when you think about that name, you think about how he healed you. I need some folk who can testify this morning that when you think about that name, you think about how he redeemed you. When you think about that name, you think about how he restored you. You think about that name, you think about how he was able to take your brokenness, oh my God, today, and put you back together again. I need about 10 people, I'll make number 11, who will just worship the name of Jesus. I don't care who's around, I don't care who's looking, I don't care who's upset, but every chance I get, I'm going to lift up the name of Jesus. Every chance I get, my hands are going to go up, my feet are going to get lighter, and I'm going to bless the name of Jesus. If you join me this morning and you don't mind blessing that name, you ought to just take about 45 seconds to bless the name of Jesus. Come on and bless him, come on and bless him. Come on and bless him, come on and bless him. Come on and bless him, come on and bless him. Come on and lift up his name. Come on and worship his name. It's something about the name of Jesus. It's something about that name. It's something about that name. Yes, it's something about the name.
watching this morning, you've been going through a difficult week this week. Some of you been sick. Some of you lost your job. But somebody can testify that out of all that I lost, I didn't lose my praise. I need about 10 folk who can bless the name of Jesus. I'm going to give you a few seconds and you just open up your mouth right where you are, in your living room, in your kitchen, in your car, and just begin to bless the name of Jesus. Bless him, bless him, bless him. Praise him like it's your last time. Worship him like it's your last time. Express your gratitude like it's your last time. You ought to thank him. Oh, bless his name. Bless his name, bless his name, bless his name. Oh, bless his name. Oh, bless his name. Oh, bless his name. It's something about the name of Jesus. Ah, it's something about the name of Jesus. Ah, it's something about the name of Jesus. It's something about the name. Oh, my, 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 my. We bless the name of Jesus. We worship the name of Jesus, for there's no greater name than the name of Jesus. This is the day the Lord has made, and we've come for no other reason but to rejoice and be glad in it. If you're excited this morning that God has blessed you, that God has kept you, you ought to just let it be known by shouting amen. And I, I, I know somebody's happy this morning. My soul is happy. I'm trying to move on. I'm trying to go forth, but it's something about the name of Jesus. Uh, and, I, and I can just sense in my spirit that somebody's at home jumping. Somebody's at home running. Uh, and, and, and it didn't take the music, uh, but I want you, you I'm going to give you a few seconds uh, to just get your praise break in right where you are. worship experience but we feel the power of God in here and I pray that you feel the power of God at your home in your car in your place wherever your preferred place of worship is this morning I pray that you feel his power the way we feel his power and it's something about that name it's something about the Holy Spirit when you try to move on and, and, and when you try to move on but when you think about his goodness and all he's done, you get the can't help it. And your feet get light and your hands begin to go up and you can't help yourself. And you begin to give God your best praise. Come on, one, two, three.
serving. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the sun, the Lord's name is worthy to be praised. I don't care what you did it with. I don't care what you're facing. I don't care how hard it is. It's never too hard for God. To God be the glory for the things he has done. We're excited this morning. If you can't tell, we're excited this morning. And we're going to move forth in our worship experience as that music continues to play. As that music continues to play, we have a few quick announcements. We have a few quick announcements. We're grateful for our pre-service announcements. If you miss them, go back and tune back in. But here we are today, this morning, to give a few quick announcements. I want to reiterate the announcement regarding the YMCA uh, youth camp for children ages 5 through 12. It's a free camp. If you have kids that need to be in camp, you can check out the YMCA, the Hutchison Branch YMCA. They have some space available. And then also my last announcement is food on the move. I announced it last week. They're going to be giving food, free groceries and providing produce. Um, and originally the time was from 6 to 8, but they've since moved the time to 5 to 7 p.m. That's 5 to 7 p.m. at B.S. Roberts Park, directly, uh, directly next to B.S. Roberts Park, across the street from the Langston Tulsa campus. That concludes my announcements this morning. But before I go, as we prepare our hearts for further praise and worship I want to remind you of the importance of making sure you adhere to the mask mandate I know uh, our, our city has opened back up but but as our city and our state open back up we've had several more cases of COVID and so I want you to make sure that you are taking the necessary precautions to ensure your safety and the safety of others uh, I tell you something that uh, even if you have to wear a mask a mask won't hinder your praise. We're all wearing our mask in here this morning because we want to make sure that we're being safe. And I want you to make sure that you are being safe. Uh, it's not a political thing. It's not a, a right or left, a Republican or Democrat. It's for the safety of people. If y'all want to get back to church and get back to life as usual, I ask that you please, 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 ma'am, please, sir, Put on your mask. Well, we're excited. If you can't tell, we've come for no other reason but to lift up the name of Jesus. And it's prayer time, church, with everything that's going on in our world. Uh, it is now time to pray. So I, I ask that as Minister Carl Jackson comes this morning, that you will prepare your hearts for prayer. Prefer, whatever your preferred posture of prayer is, it may be kneeling, it may be standing, whatever your prefer, preferred posture is, I pray that you will assume that posture as we go to the throne of grace. Praise the Lord, everybody. Let's go before the throne of God this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for everything that you have done for us on today, Lord God, even during this season of being in our homes, Lord God. God, I just thank you that you have kept us, that you have covered us, that you have comforted us, Lord God. Even at times when we think that things are not working out the way they should be, Lord God, we thank you that you always show up and you always show out. God, today, this morning, God, we pray, Lord God, for the nation, not just for the city. We pray for the nation, Lord God. We pray for the United States. We pray for the entire world, Lord God, that is going through this pandemic. God, we just ask that you would cover each and every individual, Lord God. Lord God, we ask that you would be with the individuals that are going through the coronavirus, Lord God. We ask you to be with their families, Lord God. We just ask that you would stop by each and every hospital, Lord God, even, even makeshift hospitals, Lord God. We just ask that you would touch, Lord God. Deliver and set free, Lord God. God, even doing this, Lord God, let this be a time that the families can get together, Lord God, that they will be able to love on one another, to, to show one another, Lord God, the love that you have taught us, Lord God, to show that agape love, God, that a genuine love to Heavenly Father toward our fellow man and toward our family, Lord God. Lord God, I ask that you would be with our government officials today, Lord God. Lord God, we know that there is an uproar of where we should wear a mask or where we don't wear a mask. 
us. But Lord God, just like Pastor Dyer said, it's not even political, Lord God. We just need to make sure, Lord God, that we are doing our part, Lord God, so we can get back to being into your house and being fellowshipping with one another, Lord God. Lord God, where there is any lack, Lord God, we just ask that you will feel it, Lord God. Lord God, be with individuals that are going to be, have lost their jobs or are losing their jobs, Lord God. Lord God, you put them in the right career path when this thing is over, Lord God. Set their, make every crooked way straight, Lord God, and open every door, Lord God, that is oh, that it should be open to them, Lord God. Let their tables not go empty, Lord God, and let their pockets be full, Lord God, but not just with money or material things, God, but most importantly with your love, Lord God, and, 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 and your love for you, Lord God, and your love for your people, Lord God. Lord God, we just ask that you would be with those who are suffering through bereavement, Lord God, and even those, Lord God, who are sick among us, Lord God, we just ask that you would go ahead and touch, go by and touch each and every one of them, Lord God. Lord God, we not ask these things in our name, Lord God, but we ask these things in your darling son, Jesus Christ's name. It is so and amen. And we trust you, oh God.
out to me and we trust you God we trust you you are infinite you're the ultimate we trust you God we trust you I will trust in the love See, I will trust in the love. See, I will trust in the love until I die. Oh. See, I will trust in the Lord. You're the infinite, you're the ultimate, and we trust you, God, we trust you, thank you for never leaving us, God, we trust you, yes. we trust you, oh, we trust you, we trust you, see, we trust you, we Do you trust, trust him this morning? Do you fully we trust him this morning? We we so often we say we trust him. We say that our faith is in him. Too many times we worry when we should truly be trusting him. The praise team wants to remind you this morning that no matter what it is that you're going through, you can trust him. Will you trust him today? Trust him with your life. Trust him with your family. Trust him with your finances. Trust him with everything. Maybe this is too new for you, but I praise he wanted to meet you right where you were. And so I want them to go back into the old school version of we trust you. We're simply saying the same thing. But, but, but Big Mama said, I'll trust in the Lord until I die. How excellent is your name in all the earth from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same lord your name is worthy to be praised we've come here on this morning to simply say no matter what it looks like no matter how difficult it is no matter the pain we have to face no matter the tears that may fall god we still trust you even when we can't trace you we still trust you. Even when we don't know and we can't see what you're doing, working behind the scenes, we still trust you. And the reason that we trust you is because our testimony is you've never failed us yet. And for that, oh God, we're grateful. Your people have come today. Some of them have come with their hearts broken. Some of them have come today in the need of restoration, in the need of being mended and made whole again. God, I pray today that your word will pierce their hearts and give them the encouragement they need to continue to trust you and to live holy for you. It's in Jesus' name we pray and we thank you. If you are determined to trust him today, shout amen. 
Amen. Amen. We're grateful again for this marvelous music ministry. I'm going to call them the Soul Sisters. I don't know if y'all saw those Power to the People shirts they had on today, but they sang beautifully. Come on, let's hear it again. Just put your, put your clapping hands emoji in the comment section to uh, give God a hand of praise for this marvelous music ministry. We're grateful to them Sunday after Sunday. Again, we are in part three of our series, Building from Brokenness, and I'm grateful to God for your kind words and your calls and your text messages and emails that have stated how this series has blessed you and how it's uh, been beneficial to you in dealing with brokenness. And so I pray that um, it will continue to be a blessing to you. If you will turn with me your attention to Ephesians chapter 4 verses 22 through 32, Ephesians chapter 4, verses 22 through 32, Ephesians chapter 4, and I'm going to read for our reading today from the New International Version, and then I'll read only verse 31 from the Message Bible. I pray that in your own prayer time and meditation time that you will read verses 22 through 32 in the Message Bible. But for the sake of time this morning, I'll only read uh, 22 through 32 from the NIV and then 31 from the Message Bible. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 22 through 32, and it reads, You were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitude of your minds and to put on the new self, created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to your neighbor, for we are all members of one body. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you're still angry. And do not give the devil a foothold. Anyone who has been stealing must steal no longer, but must work doing something useful with their own hands that they may have something to share with those in need. Verse 29 says, Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were sealed for the day from the day of redemption. Verse 31 says, Get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as in Christ God forgave you. And verse 31 in the Message Bible simply puts it like this. Make a clean break with all cutting, backbiting, profane talk. Be gentle with one another, sensitive. Forgive one another as quickly and as thoroughly as God in Christ forgave you. I would again that you would look at verse 31, get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling, and slander, along with every form of malice. So for the time that it is ours to share together with this third installment of Building from Brokenness, our topic today is something has to break. Something has to break. In this series so far, we have talked about being broken but not bound by sin. And then last week we talked about the beauty of brokenness and discussing how beautiful things can be birthed out of broken people. Last week we also talked about how things uh, that others have done to you has contributed to your brokenness. And we talked about people mocking your situation and leading you to feel as if you will never be able to produce anything beautiful. We talked in that text about how brokenness can be a result of what someone else has done to you. And I reminded you last week that brokenness is not necessarily a bad thing. 
This week, I want us to focus, to continue our focus on brokenness, but I want us to focus on uh, uh, what we've done to contribute to our own brokenness. I know I lost about 30 of you right there. Y'all started dropping. I know y'all started dropping. This is not initially what I had planned to talk about this week, but during my prayer time and meditation time, the Lord shifted my train of thought and said, uh, son, I need you to talk to the people uh, about the things that they've done to contribute uh, to brokenness. Oftentimes we understand that our brokenness has been contributed to others. We blame others. We're reminded of what others have done to contribute to our brokenness. And yes, we cannot negate the fact that others have done things to us that have caused us to become broken inside. But there is also another side of this brokenness that we have to take responsibility for. If we're going to be real this morning, if we're going to truly build from brokenness, some of our brokenness, uh, we have to understand uh, it's caused by the things and the people we're attached to. It's caused by, by, the, by the things that we're engaged with and involved in. Uh, and, and, and in order to build from brokenness, uh, I'm talking to tell you there are some things uh, and some people uh, you're going to have to break away from. If you're going to build from brokenness, there are some things uh, in life and some people uh, in your life that you're going to have to leave in the past. Uh, are, are, are the thing, I want you to ask yourself this. I promise I won't be with you long. I promise I won't be with you long. I got to get home uh, and eat my dinner. Uh, so I want you to ask yourself this. Are the things and the people you're involved with contributing to you becoming whole? Or, they, or are they contributing to your brokenness? Let me ask you for that, uh, that again, for those of you who are writing, uh, are the things and the people, the activities uh, and, and the relationships that you have, are they truly contributing to building you and, and making you whole or are they responsible for part of you being broken? Understand, brothers and sisters, wholeness, wholeness is a sense of being full and completely containing all of the elements that properly belong. Notice I said they contain all of the elements that properly belong. Many times uh, there are things that, that, that we think are making us whole because we become accustomed to them. But the truth of the matter is in all actuality they aren't helping us become whole because they don't properly belong with us. They have, they have, they have uh, positioned themselves and, and they have a place, uh, uh, we have positioned ourselves and we're in a place to where we're able uh, to function in our brokenness uh, and we've mistaken it for being whole. Many times our brokenness derives out of a place from our past. Instead of realizing that, that we're new creatures and we're new creations, we, when we accept Christ, uh, we harbor on the things of old uh, uh, and the things that we used to do uh, uh, instead of moving forward in our new life with Christ. And when we do that, it hinders our growth. Many, many believers are, are having trouble walking in their new life with Christ because uh, they're trying to live for Christ uh, but keep the old ways that had them broken uh, before Christ. My brothers and sisters, in order to build, uh, in order to become whole, something has to break. You, you, you've got to break some of those old habits. You've got to break away from some of those old people and those old things. And let me tell you, move in, scoot in a little closer, move in a little closer. You may even have to break away from some family. But I want you uh, to, to understand that in order to, to move forward and to become a whole, there are some things you need to break away from. I want, I want you to take some, some time to do some self-reflection. I want you to, 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 to look back and do some self-reflection throughout this sermon. And I want you to really, really, truly ask yourself, and if you have to get a pen and pad and write this down, I want you just to begin to ask yourself, what are those things and who are those people that are contributing to your brokenness? Who are those people? What are those things that you need to break away from in order to become whole? 
The reason, the reason that something has to break is because Jesus saved you. And, and when he saved you, he had an expectation of you to put away your old way of living. Let me ask you a question. Many of us, we talk about we want to be whole. We want to build from brokenness. What if your wholeness was contingent upon your obedience? What if you becoming whole was determined by how obedient you were to God? As we look at this text today, uh, Paul is talking to the church in Ephesus. Ephesus was a pagan city. Ephesus, uh, it was a wicked place. And these new uh, young Christians had to live in the midst of evil. So Paul pins this letter. He puts pen to parchment and writes this letter. It, uh, and in the latter part of chapter 4, he tells them how to break away from the old way of living. So the first thing Paul reminds us is, I only got two points today and I'm going to get on out of here. I'm going to back on out. The first thing Paul reminds us is that we need to deviate from our past. Talk back to me here. Say deviate from our past. Verse 22 through 23 says, you were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by deceitful desires. To be made new in the attitudes of your mind. Paul is reminding them that they can no longer live the way they lived in the past. Now that they are believers, there is an expectation of a new life. And there is an expectation of them to rid themselves of their former way of living. And when you become a, a Christian and a believer, you understand that your old way of life contributes to your harm and your brokenness. Brokenness. Paul is saying that this thing is not just a one and done thing. You don't just become saved and, and then go back to doing what you used to do. Paul is saying uh, this is a daily commitment. This isn't just something that you do uh, uh, every now and again and you go back to it. But this is a daily commitment. We have to, to break away uh, and rid ourselves of the things uh, of the past that don't fit our new life in Christ. Let me say it to you again. We have to break away from things that don't fit our new life in Christ. How many of you have clothes that you wore 20 years ago? How many of you have clothes that you wore 10 years ago? None of y'all, I hope. Okay. But, 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 but the, the truth of the matter is, we don't have those things. Why is it that we don't have those things? Because they don't fit. Here, here, here is a shirt uh, that, that, that my wife bought me 10 years ago. We were going to the Thunder game with my friend Nate and his uh, lady friend at the time. And we were going to the Thunder game and we wanted to match. Kim had a shirt like this and she bought me a shirt like this. This shirt used to be white. And I used to be a little smaller and this shirt used to fit. I said this was 10 years ago. And now here we see. I'm not going to even do that to y'all. But we see that this thing that was once old, I still have. But it no longer fits me the way uh, that it used to fit me because uh, it's not designed to fit me uh, like that anymore. It, 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 it's, it's dingy. It's, it's out of style. Uh, it's discolored. But here's the truth of the matter is that the truth of it is, is so many of us, we try to put on uh, old things. Uh, I just bought this shirt over new things. Uh, and when you try to put on the old with the new, uh, you look crazy. And so I'm stopping by to tell you this morning uh, that, 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 that if you are going to be a new creation in Christ, you got to get rid of the old things. You got to get rid of the things that don't fit. You got to get rid of the things that don't match. You got to get rid of the things that don't align with who God has called you to be. And so I want to help you today. I want to help you today that sometimes our brokenness is because we're holding on to things that no longer fit who we're trying to be. 
It applies in here in our, in our life. Uh, we're, 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 we're holding on to things that are outdated. We're holding on to things that don't fit. God is, ca- is calling us and telling us to remove those things that don't fit. I've got something new for you. I've made you a new creature. I've made you a new creation. Brothers and sisters, the truth of the matter is we have lifestyles and we run with people that no longer fit us. We fail to remove ourselves. Here it is, Mr. Kerr, we fail to remove ourselves because of familiarity. We become familiar with them. And not only do, do we become familiar with them, but, 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 but Margaret, it becomes convenient for us. And, 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 and we don't want to do anything that's going to make us uncomfortable or inconvenience us. And so we stick around because it's familiar. We stick around because it's convenient. But I've come to tell you today that there are some things that may inconvenience you. But when you have confidence in Christ, you don't mind going to things that inconvenience you. Christ saved us. He saved us to free ourselves from the old way of living. And although it may not be as convenient as you want it to be, it's worth it. It's worth it. Paul, Paul, Paul tells us when we live in our former lives, Paul says we have those deceitful desires. And, and the truth of the matter is, I'm going I'm to push you today. I'm going to really step on your toes, step on your porch and ring your doorbell and knock on your door. Many of us have deceitful desires, and I'm talking about we desire to have things that we see that other people have. You want the car they drive. You want the house they live in. You want the job they have. You are, we're living in a social media society where so many people are, are busy comparing themselves. And so when we see what others have, we have these deceitful desires to want what they have. But I'm stopping by to tell you this morning, in order for you to become a whole again, you got to be grateful for what God has gifted you with and know that you what you have is more than enough. He'll give you what you need to become whole again Christ is saying I've created you to be new I've created you uh, to be a new creature to put off those old things and and to be grateful for the newness that I've given you and I wonder is there anybody in here or anybody out there who can testify this morning that I'm grateful for the newness of life I'm grateful that God gave me a new start In order to build from brokenness, not only do we have to rid ourselves of deceitful desires and stop comparing and stop wanting what others have and stop uh, stop, stop having these desires of things that are not meant for you. Here, here, here it is. The Lord just dropped this in. Sometimes uh, uh, a lot of our brokenness is contributed because we ask for things and we get the things that we really, really, really can't handle. We ask for things. Our brokenness is contributed because we ask, we have the deceitful desires. And then we say, Lord, will you give me this? And, and, and sometimes uh, he'll give it to you to show that it's not necessarily meant for you. Uh, and, and, and so that contributes to our brokenness. But you've got to understand to be grateful for what God has blessed you with. Here it is, brothers and sisters. Not only does Paul talk about our deceitful desires, but I told you I'm going to really be on your front door today. He talks about you got to have a new attitude. I didn't make it up. Paul did. Get mad at him, not me. It says to be made new in the attitude of your mind. What it's simply saying is that when you become a part of the Lord's family, you have to have a new way of thinking. In order to build from brokenness, we have to have a new way of thinking which is given to us by the Holy Spirit. You can't think about things the way you used to think about them. And here it is. I'm going to push it a little further. You can't respond to things the way you used to respond to them. Let me tell y'all, the Lord is really working with me on this. When you know he got, He gave you a new attitude in Christ. Let me tell y'all, let me tell y'all what happened to me this week. Uh, just, the, just this week, the Lord was really testing me when he said you got to have a new attitude. So uh, my wife and I have been having some, uh, uh, you know, an issue with our neighbors. They just, you know, don't understand boundaries and and all of that. Uh, So sometimes they let their dogs roam in our yard and their bicycles be in our yard and all that. Well, well, this particular few days ago, we sit in the living room 
and with the blinds open, it was a nice sunny day. We sitting with the living room, all of us sitting in there watching TV, and our blinds are open, and we see uh, our next door neighbor, little boy. He's got to be maybe uh, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I don't know how old he is, little boy. Um, and he is standing at our tree, and I'm just going to let you use your imagination to figure out what he was doing by our tree. And so Kim sees him, and so the rev runs outside, and I had to remember that the Lord has called me to be the pastor of the Friendship Church, and so I'm a representation of him at all times. But, 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 but so I went outside, and I said, hey, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, sir. He goes on running down the street. But he comes back down the street, and I said, excuse me, sir, uh, did you? And I asked him, did he do what I saw him do? And uh, he starts crying. And then he goes and gets his mother. His mother comes outside. And this is what really took me to the next level. But I had to just keep looking down. You know, I, I literally looked down the whole time while she was talking to Kim because I knew that there was a, a boy from 49th Street North on the north side of Tulsa that was deep down embedded inside of me. Uh, 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 they, these are the same people who a few weeks ago, had a few months ago, had let their dogs chase Kim. So, so I'm already feeling away. Uh, and, uh, and so the, the, the mom comes outside and there's just simply so, 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 such... Uh, passivity. She's like, oh, you know, he just couldn't hold it, you know. I, I, I'm so sorry. I'm just, he just couldn't hold it. Literally, their house is 10 steps away from our tree. And so I'm just continuously looking down because if I look up and I see how nonchalant she is, then I know what's going to come out. But, but the Lord was really true. I promise it had to be the Lord. I know it was nobody but the Lord because he had to deal with me for me not to respond uh, uh, to, the, to what I really, really wanted to truly say uh, to, this, uh, to this young lady. And so I'm stopping to tell you that when you put on the newness of Christ, uh, the old you uh, has to be put aside. I know some of y'all say, Pastor, every now and again, I got to pull them out to let them know I still got it. But no, baby, you got to make sure you put that old thing aside because Christ has called you to be a new creature. I know some of y'all still working like me. You still working. I know, and I'm praying for you. I am. Trust me, I'm praying for you because, you know, in this day and age, this current environment, folk will push you there. I'm just going to say that and I'm going to leave it alone. Uh, but, 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 but when he calls you to be a new, creature, a new, new creation and a new creature in Christ, you got to have a different mindset. You gotta change your attitude. You can't respond to stuff the way uh, that, that, that you used to respond to stuff. And so I wanna ask you today uh, uh, do you still respond to people and things the way you used to before you got saved? Are, are people able to tell that you're living for Christ uh, by your response? Are people able to tell that you're a believer by your attitude and your actions? And so if you have to wonder and question, I want you to do some reconsideration on some things that you need to change. Many of us are trying, are trying to build from our brokenness, uh, but, but, but we're not changing our way of thinking. And the truth of the matter is many of us have broken attitudes, and our broken attitudes so seeds of doubt, discord, and discouragement. And when those attitudes sow those seeds, it leads to us feeling defeated. That's why many of us feel broken. Let me say it to you again for your writing. Many of us have broken attitudes, and when you have a broken attitude, those attitudes sow seeds of doubt, discord, and discouragement, which lead to us feeling defeated. And so in order for us to build from our brokenness, we got to break away from the negative way of thinking. We got to break away from our old way of thinking. Not only do we need to deviate from our past, but here's the second one, and I'm out of here. The second one is we need to be diligent in our efforts. Diligent in what efforts? Pastor, thank you so much for asking. We got to be diligent in our efforts to represent Christ. Paul tells us how we are to do this, and we need to understand that we're created to be like God. And Paul says, how do we do this in righteousness and in holiness? He tells us to make sure we're speaking truthfully and he tells us that we can be angry but not to let our anger cause us to sin. Let me say that for you again. You know, I want you to know that you can be angry. It's okay. It's a natural thing to be angry, but you cannot allow that anger 
to cause you to sin. What happened at my house a few days ago, I was angry. And if y'all can't tell now, I'm still angry. But I did not allow that anger to cause me to sin. Because I'm a representation of him. And I want to make sure that when people see me, they see Christ in me. He tells us to make sure that we're speaking truthfully in verses, uh, uh, if, if, if we read verses 25 through 28, Paul gives us ways uh, to show how to be righteous. And then we go to 20, verses 29 through 31. He shows us the things that we need to break away from. Paul tells us what we need to get rid of in order to walk in the newness of life. Paul says, don't let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth. I told you I'm coming for you today. Told you I'm coming to your house today. Paul says, don't let any unwholesome things come out of your mouth, uh, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs. Here so often, brothers and sisters, uh, we have a way of always uh, talking about folk and tearing them down, uh, and we should use that same energy uh, to build folk up. Uh, if you are a believer in Christ and you are a new creature in Christ, the things that you say should be designed to build folk up. If you see me, a lot of times I'm always trying to encourage somebody. I'm always trying to lift somebody up because we have enough in society that's tearing us down, and so we as believers should be building one another's up. Verse goes on to say, do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. There it is, verse 31. Here's what he says. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, brawling, and slander along with every form of malice. I'm talking to somebody today. This message was for you. I don't know who you are but hopefully you'll tell me later that this message was for you. You're trying to build from brokenness but these are some things that you got to break away from. You're still bitter. You're still dealing with anger. You're still dealing with rage and you still got some stuff you want to say and you're on the verge of saying it and you can't quite become whole. You can't quite become mended because you are, have not broken away from these things. I'm stopped by to tell you today, and if you want to truly build from your brokenness, these things you need to break away from. You can't live life bitter. You can't live life holding on to the things that people have done to you. You can't live life uh, uh, walking around here always cussing folk out and, and wanting to tell them what's on your mind. Sometimes you need to keep what's on your mind on your mind. I'm just going to tell them what's on my mind, Okay. All right, do you. But, but, but understand what comes with that. Sometimes what comes, what's on our mind that comes out of our mouths misrepresents Christ. And so, brothers and sisters, we, we have to break away from these things uh, that, that do not show that we are the believers that Christ has called us to be. We can no longer hold on to bitterness. You'll never be able to heal. You'll never be able to be restored. You'll never be able to be whole as long as you're holding on to things of the past. I want you to, to truly be blessed by this series today. And I pray that this message has made you look at your own life and see what things you're holding on to that you need to break away from. And I tell you that in order to become whole, something has to break. In order for you to become mended again, in order for you to become whole again, in order for you to walk in the newness of life again, something has to break. You can't walk around here bitter. Something has to break. You can no longer hold on to those things that no longer fit you. Something has to break. Maybe it's a lifestyle. Maybe it's somebody you're, you, you, you're running with that, that you know uh, is not pushing you to where God is trying to take you. Something has to break. Maybe it's drugs that you've relied on to cope with your brokenness. And the truth of the matter is those drugs are continuously breaking you. And so it's time for you to break away from them. Something has to break. Maybe... It's the bottle that you've become heavily dependent upon. And if you're honest, the bottle is breaking you. 
and you need to break away from it, something has to break. You need to be delivered today. I want you to become whole. I want you to become uh, brand new. I want the, the, the fragments of your broken life to be put back together again. But in order for that to happen, there's some things that you're going to have to do. You're going to have to break away from some folk. You're going to have to break away from some things. I'm done today. And I pray that the Lord has touched your heart to realize that in order to build from brokenness, I got to break away from things that don't align with who he's called me to be. And so I want to pray for you today. I want to pray for you today, somebody who's dealing with brokenness and you're dealing with holding on to things and people that you need to break away from. Father, will you touch my brother, my sister today who's dealing with the brokenness of life and the reason for their brokenness is because they haven't broken away from things that are breaking them. So, Father, I pray today that whatever it is and whoever it is, that you will release them from them. That you will help them re remove the blinders from their eyes to help them to see uh, that they can become whole again when they break away from that thing. And God, I pray that they have the strength. I pray that they have the willpower. I pray that they have the fortitude. I pray that they have what they need in order to continue to be what you are calling them to be. And God, when they break away, please don't let them go back. We trust you today, oh God, that some people are, are breaking away as we speak right now. Some people uh, are, are breaking away from some habits. Some people are breaking away from some things because they want to be whole. And they know that in order to be whole, something has to break. Father, will you break it? Will you break them away from it. And then when you break them away from it, make them whole again. We trust you. We depend on you. We totally rely on you. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. And we thank you. Amen. Amen. This morning, somebody is listening to this message. And you've been dealing with brokenness. But you've identified that it's some things that you need to break away from. And you said that I need to to no longer live my old way of life. I want to walk in the newness. If that's you today and you want to be saved, you simply saying, Pastor, I want to be whole. I want to become brand new. I no longer want to live my old way of living. I want to live for Christ. If that's you today, simply type, I want to be saved. If you want to walk in the newness, simply type, I want to be saved. And then there's somebody here that's watching, somebody else that's watching today. You're saved. You already know Jesus, but you have been dealing with brokenness. And be, that's because you haven't broken away from some things. But you're determined today through this message, something you're saying, Pastor, something has to break. Something has to give. Something has to go away. I got to get rid of some of these things. And, and in order for you to do that, not only uh, do you need to have a relationship with Christ, uh, but you need to partner with his church. And the Lord has shown you uh, that the friendship church, the ship, is where you need to get on board. If that's you this morning. I want you to simply type, I want to get on board. I want to be your pastor today. I want you to break away from those things that are not pushing you to him, but are pulling you away from him. Something has to break. If you want to smile again, something has to break. If you want your joy again, something has to break. If you want your peace again, something has to break. I want to be your pastor today. And if you want to get on board this ship, simply type, I want to get on board. But then finally, the third invitation I give today is for somebody who's saved. You may be a member here. Or you may be somebody elsewhere. But you, you are harboring on old things. But today you're saying, Pastor, I'm ready to break away from it. And if you want to rededicate your life today, and if you want to walk in the newness of Christ, 
you just simply type something has to break simply type in the comments something has to break and we'll reach out to you we'll pray for you we want you to walk in the newness of life as this song is sang today I pray that things began to break and you began to break away from things that are not pushing you towards Christ will you come today give your life to Christ today today because when you have your way something has to pray something has to pray today is your day now is your time things are breaking so come on Walk in the newness of life today. Oh, something has to be. I believe you'll lead me through it. I believe yeah. you'll get me to it. I believe that you will do it right now. Something has to be. Come break. on, come on, my brother. I believe you'll get me to it. Come on, my sister. I Come on, he's doing it right now. He's breaking you right now. Things are falling. You're breaking away from those old habits. You're breaking away from those old people. He's doing it right now. Come on, come on. Come on, I want to be your pastor. You need to get on board today. Something has to break. You can no longer live out of the ark of safety. Today is your day. Something has to break. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Something has to break. He's going to help you overcome. He's going to help you get through it. He's going to help you manage it. Come on, come on. Come on, I want to be your pastor. We want to be your church. Something has to break. Something has to break. Break. Today is your day. Today is your day to break those old habits, those old things, those old people. Come on, come on, come on. Something has to break. Something has to break. Come on, come on. Something has to break. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. It's breaking. It's breaking right now. Come on, come on. I know you're crying. I know you're hurting. But it's breaking right now. Come on, today is your day. He's going to get you to it. He's going to lead you through it. Let me tell you today, brothers and sisters, give your life to Christ. Come get on board the ship. Those of you who are rededicating your life, it's breaking right now. 
It's breaking right now. That habit is breaking right now. Those people, you're breaking away from it right now. Come on. Come on. Come on. Today is your day. Somebody's delivered today. Somebody's being delivered today. Somebody's being made whole right in your home, right where you are, right in your bed, in your living room, in your kitchen, wherever you are, in your car. Somebody right now, something is breaking. It, it, it had you held for hostage. It's been keeping you in bondage, but you're breaking away from it right now. It's something is breaking. Something has to break. Something has to break. grateful today for those of you today who simply said something has to break those of you who said I want to be saved those of you who have come and said I want to get on board I promise you uh, you will begin to build from your brokenness uh, since you've made the declaration uh, that something has to break I'm breaking away from some people I'm breaking away uh, from some habits I'm breaking away uh, from some from some ways of living I'm breaking away from those things because they are not pushing me uh, to where God is taking me we're grateful today that you have been touched by the word of God today. And we're grateful that this song has, has permeated your spirit and caused you to identify that something, if I'm going to get to where God is taking me, if I'm going to be all that God is calling me, something has to break. And you made the first step by making the declaration that I'm breaking away from it. We're grateful for you today. We're going to be your church family. We're going to have some accountability partners. For those of you who have rededicated your life to Christ by simply saying something has to break, you want to break away from some things. Our intercessory prayer team, some of our ministers are going to reach out to you. We're going to check in with you. We're going to help you to walk in the newness of life. Something has to break. I don't know what your something is. You don't know what my something is, but in order for us to be and build uh, uh, from our brokenness and become whole again, something, something has to break. And you gotta believe that the Lord will get you to it. And you gotta believe that you understand that it's not gonna be easy, but you gotta believe that he'll lead you through it. And it's happening right now come on all over this place come on let's lift up the name of Jesus up. that chains are falling off people are being set free they're breaking away from things that had a hold on them we, we're grateful this morning for what the Lord has done something has to break amen amen and amen well Friendship Church, our virtual shipmates, and our frequent virtual ship visitors. We're excited this morning for the opportunity to give. Come on, let's get excited about giving. It's giving time. It's giving time. And I want to first thank each of you who have been committed in your giving. It really shows how serious you are about your relationship with Christ and your relationship to his church. Because many of you have not missed out on giving, and I'm grateful to you for that. And I want to also thank those of our virtual shipmates. We have virtual shipmates in Texas and, and, and D.C. and in Georgia and people who are not even members here, but who send their tithes and their offering to this church frequently. And I want you to know that we're grateful to you for that. 
We don't take it lightly, but we're, we're grateful that you are committed to Christ uh, in your giving. Giving is a form of worship. Amen. Giving is a form of worship. When God has given to you, it's our responsibility to give back to him. And not only have you been giving your tithe, but before we, we took uh, the, the, the coronavirus hit, we had launched our Friendship Forward, which was our um, ministry, our capital campaign uh, to do some updates in our church and to do some things in our admin building. And many of you have been faithful in your pledges. Uh, you've been faithful. You've been determined to give. And you've been giving faithfully. And I promise you soon, real soon, you're going to be able to see the fruits of your labor. And so I want to tell you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I don't take it lightly. And, and you, you know, the giving is not to me. It's to God. And it's for his church. When we give, God is glorified and the church is strengthened and we are blessed. And so we have to continue to do our due diligence and give God our worship through giving. I get excited about giving back to God. as The way God has blessed me, I give what he's asked of me. I can't pay him, but I sure can say thank you through my giving. Amen. Amen. So it's giving time. We get excited to give. Maybe you're watching and you have never given before, but today you said, you know, I want to do something different. I want to trust God. I want to tie today. I want to give my offering today. And we want to provide you with several opportunities to do that. We have four ways for you to do that. You can give simply by texting the amount of your gift to 84321. Text your, the amount of your gift to 84321. Secondly, you can give by going to our website, which is www www.friendshipchurchtulsa.org that's www.friendshipchurchtulsa.org uh, click give online it will come to us many of you have downloaded the church center app and if you haven't you can go to your google play store your apple store uh, and download church center you'll see the ship uh, our logo there you download that and it'll come directly to us and even in that app you can designate where you want your gift to go if you wanted to go to friendship forward if you wanted to go to the kids ministry if you wanted to go to Sunday school, wherever you want your gift to go, you can designate it through uh, Church Center app. And then finally, uh, many of you have been responding through our Cash App giving, and so thank you. I'm so glad we implemented that. You can Cash App us at Cash Tag Friendship Tulsa. It's real easy. Cash Tag Friendship Tulsa. Uh, and if you just say, Pastor, I'm just gonna mail it in. Uh, my seniors, they have been so dedicated. They they got they on schedule every every week when they come by and drop by their ties, and I I see some of them. Uh, and it's so good to see some of them uh, who are continuously, could, they say, Pastor, I ain't been nowhere but to church to drop off my tithes. And so thank y'all so much. I love y'all. Uh, and I want you to understand that when you give, it helps to strengthen the body of Christ. Amen. Let us pray. God, we're grateful today for these, your people uh, who are determined that despite this pandemic, they're going to continuously worship you through their giving, God. And God, I pray that you will utilize this gift to glorify your kingdom. May it glorify, edify, and magnify this place. In Jesus' name we pray and we thank you. Amen.
grateful this morning. We're so excited for how the Lord has moved today. We're so excited for these people who have responded to the word of God. I'm just super excited that the Lord has been blessing us even through this pandemic. God has been adding to our church. And so thank you, thank you, thank you, friendship, for your faithfulness and for your commitment. Uh, thank you for continuously tuning in. If this series has been a blessing to you, uh, we want to hear from you. We want to see you. Uh, we want to see you in worship. We want to hear how this has blessed you. So if you will, just uh, send us a comment in the comment section or send it to us on our post later this week or inbox us. We just want to hear how this series has been a blessing to you. I want y'all to pray for um, our business manager. I haven't seen him all day today, but I think it's because I brought this wonderful cup in. And so he's been hiding, you know, this beautiful Omega Sapphire cup. It keeps the cappers away, okay? <laughs> Y'all, he just walked in the door. I want the cameraman, uh, Reverend, Reverend Seth, will you zoom in on this so the saints can see this beautiful piece of art? It has, it has kept our, uh, our, our business manager, uh, he plays the wrong 1911. And y'all, I was wondering why my armor bearer, Deacon Leach, had been so distant from me today. But I see that it's because the power of Omega Sapphire has kept them away. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding, y'all. We Listen, listen. If you can't laugh in church, there's something wrong with you. We like to have fun. We like to enjoy life. We like to hoorah. Uh, and so I'm grateful again to all of you. Y'all continue to pray for our, our members and take COVID seriously. We've had some members who have been affected. Um, they, they are at home and they're doing better, but this thing has hit really close to home. And so please, ma'am, please, sir, wear your mask, wash your hands, uh, stay away from folk. Uh, and if you sick, stay at home. Amen. Stay at home, stay at home. But we're grateful again. I want to pray for you today. Um, and before I pray, I just thought about something I forgot to make mention. Next week, we're going to celebrate one year of being together, friendship. We're going to celebrate being together, being together. And I am super excited, y'all. I, I love y'all. You know, you guys have been so good to my family and I, and we're grateful. I never imagined um, pastoring, let alone through a pandemic. Amen. Uh, the Lord has simply strengthened us for such a time as this. And I wouldn't want to be partnered with any other church than the Friendship Church who has shown their faithfulness through this time. And so y'all have been good to me. Y'all been good to my kids. Uh, y'all been good to my wife. And we are simply super, super grateful to everything you've done for us. And this is one of many, many more. This is our, our first year and we got many more years to go together. Um, as long as y'all have me, I'm going to be here. Uh, and so I, I love y'all and I want to thank um, everybody. And we'll do more formalities of that next week. But I just want you to know next week we're celebrating. Uh, and so I look forward. Make sure you tune in next week. I want y'all to tune in next week for my anniversary. That's my anniversary gift. Tune in next week. Uh, tune in next week. But let us pray. Gracious Father in heaven, to God, we're grateful for these, your people who have tuned into the virtual ship. God, I pray that through this season of brokenness, they will begin to build and become whole and understand that there are some things that they have to get rid of in order to be who you're calling us to be. God, I thank you. Will you bless them? Will you continue to keep them? Will you continue to protect them? In Jesus' name, we pray and we thank you. If you love Jesus, shout amen. We love you. We'll see you next week.